afternoon and welcome to your 4 to 5. This is an interactive news show that's really built to help you connect with the community around you and us as well. Yeah, I'm Tahay Shamoy. As you know, Eric Chilton and our Maddie Gardner is live in Mount Airy this evening. Yeah, Maddie's going to be part of the Christmas tree lighting. Maddie, isn't that correct? That is absolutely right. You know, I thought fourth day of the show we might as well take it on the road right guys and what a better place to start than my hometown of Mount Airy North Carolina so tonight at six o'clock I am lighting the Christmas tree I still cannot believe they're letting me do that they must trust me a lot with that one right so lighting the Christmas tree outside of the municipal building that happens at six but for the entire four to five we're going to explore downtown Mount Airy see how it's grown up in the past six years and of course we're talking Mayberry by the way question for you have you ever heard of Surrey Sonker we're talking about that at 4.15. Chime in on our Facebook feed and on that YouTube Live. We will, and I hadn't before Maddie brought this no, up. I I'm had from no Surrey idea. County, so yeah. All right, thanks, Maddie. Maddie, our hometown hero there, yes, representing in exactly Mount Airy. Right. Let's get you caught up on more headlines of the day. Here's your 4 to 5 roundup. A North Carolina Republican lawmaker is stepping up to the plate. Representative Mark Walker is challenging Senator Tom Tillis for their party's nomination. Walker's new district would lean more towards Democrats since the state redrew district lines. A spokesperson for Tillis released a statement saying Tillis seems confident he will win the primary election if there is one. It's flooding news feeds and airwaves, the impeachment inquiry. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says she wants Judiciary Chairman Jerry Nadler to draft articles of impeachment against the president. Three scholars testified they felt the president committed impeachable offenses. The fourth said he believed there was not enough evidence. Back here in the triad, will Guilford County Schools bus drivers get the pay raise they were hoping for? Guilford County commissioners will be voting tonight on how to spend nearly $6 million of unused money. The leftover money comes from county voting machines that cost far less than expected. Commissioners will also decide whether money will go towards maintenance for schools, specifically heating and cooling systems. Greensboro is growing once again. Sunlight Batteries USA is investing more than $6 million in Guilford County, establishing its first North American assembly and distribution facilities in Greensboro. 46 lucky people will land a job at the new facility when it opens. And it's time to talk about our forecast for tonight. It's going to be chilly as we head into the overnight. This is really where we've been, though, the last couple of mornings in those lower 30s, low to mid 30s, we'll say. Clear early. Some of the clouds will start to build in as we head throughout the evening. For tomorrow, though, look for those temperature highs going up to 55 degrees. That's just about where we should be. Now, there is a very slight chance of seeing a stray shower. I don't think that'll amount to a whole lot as we head into your Friday. But when you look into the weekend, it will be cooler. Look for highs in the 40s. We could see some lows in the 20s. Another North Carolina town canceling a Christmas parade. Wake Forest is now concerned about possible violence. That's the reason why they decided to. Police received a credible threat against the sons and daughters of the Confederacy, so the board of directors voted Wednesday to cancel their parade. Town Mayor Vivian Joins says officials plan to meet in early 2020 to discuss future parades. In the meantime, Wake Forest's board votes comes just one week after the town of Garner made a similar move. That town canceled the Christmas parade this year as well. Leader cited, quote, concerns that the event could be targeted for disruption. Back here in the triad, no cancellations to worry about. We hope to see you in either Winston-Salem or Greensboro on Saturday. The Greensboro Holiday Parade starts at noon in downtown Greensboro. Make sure you're one of the thousands there. There's also the Winston-Salem JC's Holiday Parade. That starts at 5. Both parades are happening rain or shine, and WFMY News 2 will be at each one, so make sure you come out and give us a wave when you see us. All right, so if you want to start celebrating the holidays maybe a day earlier, then head to the Festival of Lights in Greensboro. This is tomorrow. Downtown will be transformed into the Winter Wonderland. This starts around 6 p.m. There'll be caroling, photo booths, and a tree lighting ceremony, which starts at exactly 656. That happens at City Center Park there. Or you can head over to the WFMY News 2 Winterfest. Lace up some skates and have fun. It's open every day except Tuesday when they have curling during that. And of course, we learned today that you can skate for free, by the way, on Mondays from 4 to 5. We just figured that out. We have a list of discounts uh, for Winterfest on our website. Just go to WFMYNews2.com and search. 
for Winterfest. Very cool. And if you're going to watch that from four to five, you just watch us while yeah, you skate. Yeah, as you skate. It's with very your safe. phone up. <laughs> That's what you do. And watch out for other people. Right. All right. So we talked about this a moment ago. I'm from Mount Airy, right? Born and raised there. So is Maddie Gardner, but a lot sure has changed over the years. Yeah. When I first came here, I learned that it was uh, once known as Mayberry, but it's not that way anymore. Maddie is giving us a tour of downtown Mount Airy and how it's grown up. Yeah, Tasha, I call it more than Mayberry now because we still love that legacy. You know, I'm on Market Street. We are running parallel to Main Street here in Mount Airy. And if you go just a block away, you're going to see Floyd's. You're going to see Snappy Lunch. You might even see Wally's service station if you walk a little bit farther. But over the past six years, Mount Airy really has grown up. I want you to take a look at some of these numbers, the renovations that have happened just in the past few years here. 57 facades redone in downtown Mount Airy, 113 jobs created. There are 27 new businesses and more than $18 million has been invested. So I'm here with Jenny Smith. She is from the Mount Airy Visitor Center. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, so we are on Market Street and you can just take a look around right now. So much has changed, Jenny. Why the focus on Market Street and how have you seen the shift in the past few years? Well, a few years ago, this was not a street that you would want to visit. Um, all of the buildings were dilapidated. There wasn't a lot going on down here. And I think it was easier to tackle a small portion of downtown um, to begin with. So we had some investors that bought up some buildings and you get one business and then it just kind of grew from there. And now it's become, you know, we have this neighborhood back here um, and it's definitely a place that people really want to come to. Right, and a lot of people spending more time down here and later hours as well. These shops are open later. Yes, uh, most all of these shops are open later. Uh, specifically in December, uh, through three Thursdays, we're going to be open until 8, a lot of the businesses downtown. So it encourages people that maybe live locally to come and shop downtown. And if they're staying, then they might stay longer and hopefully stay overnight. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, as someone who works in the visitor center, how are you seeing the shift from tourists coming to see Mayberry to people coming for Mount Airy? Well, it's definitely uh, it's definitely a change and we do still have a lot of people come in for Mayberry, mm -hmm. but when they get here and they realize that there's so much more that we offer, um, so many unique shops and things like that. And then we have two craft breweries right here on Market Street, mm -hmm. so within walking distance. Um, and it's nice that a lot of things are open later so that they can stay and do some things. When a lot of our attractions might close at five, they have other things to keep them occupied in the evening. That's awesome. Jenny, thank you so much for chatting with me this afternoon. You know, guys, I joke every time I come home, there's a new business, and that is a, not a bad thing. It's really a great thing here for Mount Airy. No, it is because the town's always talked about how, how can we diversify a little bit and right. we want to hold on to Mayberry but still move forward, and that's always been a thing. So. I love to just see downtown areas growing because yes. that knows that people are funneling money back into the local economy there. And lots of condos and townhomes being built downtown as well. Very cool. Huh. All right, we'll check back in with Maddie throughout the show today. So when it comes to music, we know, you know, there are lots of choices out there and all of them are designed really for our convenience. Yeah, but we want to ask you, how do you listen to music? So that is our question of the day. You can see some of the options there on the bottom of your screen right now. Uh, our most voted option is the old school radio. You maybe go on in the car and you turn it on. Flip it on just Keep like it, it used to be. Yeah, so our, your options there are satellite radio, streaming services, or old school radio. And make sure you weigh in. All you have to do is go to WFMY.com slash vote now or use our app. It's totally free. Just hit the vote now button there and we'll share some of your comments. Yeah, and as you're voting, want to tell you a little bit more about this. Spotify launched their feature called Spotify Rap today. So when you log in, you'll see the top artists and songs you li listen to in each season of this past year. It also shows you information about your list listening habits throughout the past decade. You'll also find a link to a playlist for your top songs of 2019 where you can re-listen to old favorites. And what I really love is that it can kind of tell you what genre of music you listen to. I have my results right here and it told me that I am genre fluid because nice. I like to listen to a little bit of EDM, then I go to Latin music, <laughs> and then I have some show tunes mixed in there. I did that too and it told me that mine in order were rock music standards, which is like Sinatra and the old school stuff, and then third was rap. So those were my three genres in in order there. It's really cool to check it out and uh, it's totally free just to go check it out. Yeah, it's and it's really neat. just a, a good way to just review the year and even the decade if you want to go that back. Yeah, way back, yeah. way back. <laughs> All right, so riddle me this. What is the one food from your hometown that you crave? 
People have been commenting this on my Facebook page. So go there and uh, talk about it right now. Comment if you can right on the Facebook feed and make sure you use that hashtag. It's the word for number two, word five. We'll show your comments and we'll hear from some locals coming up. And also, we want to tell you about this, a delicacy in Surrey County that Maddie Gardner found. Have you ever heard of the Surrey Sonker? If you're like me, you haven't, but we are going to tell you what it is when the 4 to 5 comes back. Hey Tasha, can you hear me? Mic check, mic check, one, two, three. We are walking to... Welcome back to the 4 to 5. Maybe you're watching us here on TV. Maybe you're on Facebook or YouTube. We say hello to you all. So let's talk a little bit about food because I know both of us love some food. <laughs> so you have the Philly cheesesteak. Sure. You have brats in Wisconsin or you have some barbecue here in the South. Yeah, it seems like every region has kind of a claim to fame. And uh, when you go to visit your hometown, we asked you, what is the one dish that you simply have to have? For me, if, if I'm in Mount Airy where Maddie is, it's the pork chop sandwich at Snappy Lunch, of course. They're known for that but I took this question to the streets to see what you had to say about this. Take a look. We're hitting the streets. Can I ask you a quick question? You guys, let me ask you one question. Super fun. We, gotta, we, we gotta, gotta be the class. 30, 30 seconds, I swear. So what's your go-to hometown food? What's your favorite? Like if you travel and then you, if you lived away, yeah. what, when you come back, what would be the first thing you get? Biscuits and gravy. I'm going from Philadelphia. Uh, Hoagies and... Or, or anything from the Polish market. Oh, Iggy's. What's that? Uh, they have clam chowder. Pizza. Where are you from? New Jersey. Can we take a break and eat? Just any kind of greasy. Oh, the heavy. Put anything, food. heavy food. Okay. Yeah. That's why you, I run. I was going to say, you should you fit in right here in the South. Don't roll on me freezing, hey. I should have gotten him. I let it go. I blew it. In West Virginia, we have Tudor's Biscuit World, and it's uh, really good stuff. I would say pizza and baked goods. Sog and makiki roti. And you can't get that here? You can get oh, it, really? but, it's, but it's not the same. That's yeah. right. It's not, nothing's like home. That's a wrap.
Mm -mm -mm. For me, you know, I think about the restaurants, but really going home is about getting mom's cooking because it's Haitian it food. Oh, and I can't right. get Haitian food a lot of places because there's not really that many restaurants to be able to go to. So I go to mom when mom, I want to get some right. food. I wonder what people are saying online with this, though, because Jalen uh, Gilkey's here with us and we're talking. I mean, are they commenting a lot about their hometown foods? Absolutely. So uh, we got a great mix of local and out of state favorites. We're going to start here with Maria and Maria's from Greensboro. She said right here in Greensboro, yum yum hot dogs. That's her favorite. Mm. And so and then we got Kathy. She said homemade pierogies. She's from Erie, Pennsylvania. That sounds delicious, Kathy. And then we got Jamie with the ribeye steak sandwich from Pete's Ooh. Burgers and more in Reedsville. And then this is my personal favorite. Like you said, Tahitia, Barbie said, my mom's cooking. Yeah, just nothing does it like mom. You can't, no one. You can't, you can't miss what mom's that. cooking. I agree. You cannot. Okay. And I wanted to add, so I have mom's cooking that I love, but I also love to venture up to Boston to try to get some food. And for me, it's about the cannolis. And there's two spots that compete against each other, Mike's Pastries and Modern Pastry. I'm a Mike's gal. So when you go up to Boston, try Mike's. one of each. I'll remember that. I'll remember this. My wife's from Buffalo. It's the same thing. It's either Anchor Bar for wings or Duff's for wings. That's the argument with people from Buffalo. All right, we're coming back in a second. You can carry the coffee. Hey, cord back intact. Walking to Pie Shop now. One, two, three, four, five. Thanks for floating. Welcome back to the four to five and don't forget, make sure you're watching us on Facebook and YouTube. And if you have to be out and about, you can take that with you. Watch right here. That's what we're doing. Look, people are right there. They're saying commenting. hello. We yes, want yours. Yes. Uh, so send the comments and make sure you use the hashtag four to five. It's like right behind us there on the board. All right. So here's the question of the day. Have you ever heard? And I'm embarrassed because I'm from Surrey County. I've never heard of the Surrey Sonker. Didn't know what that was. Didn't even know it was a food. Till that Maddie sounds told me. like a, just a weird combination of words <laughs> put together. I have no idea what that means. And fortunately, I am not alone. Take a listen. And have you ever heard of Zanka? No. No. Do you have any idea what it is? No. No. What do you think it is? Zanka. Rhymes with Wonka. Willy Wonka's uncle. I don't know. <laughs> Willy not, Wonka Sanka. Not Willy yeah. Wonka Sanka. No, that is not what it is. Maddie Gardner is in the land of the Sanka in Surrey County up there. Yeah, so Maddie, what is this all about? Wonka Sanka, Surrey Sanka. <laughs> <laughs> I like that Boston accent you put on it, Tahitia. Okay, so a Surrey Sonker, native to Surrey County. You're only going to find this dish in Surrey County. So I'm at Miss Angel's Heavenly Pies on Main Street in Mount Airy. And 
Let's just tell you what it is. What is this Surrey Songer all about? Watch this. Nestled in the valley of the Blue Ridge, Surrey County is famous for the fictional town of Mayberry. But those rolling hills also create a boundary, outside of which this dessert is unknown. If you are outside of those hills, go in any other part of this state, or going to another state or to another county, you're not going to find it. It's here. It's Surrey Sonker, a dish only baked in these 536 square miles. You're not going to go up, you know, to Wake County. They'll look at you like you're crazy. They will. And Miss Angel of Miss Angel's Heavenly Pies makes her version of a Sonker daily. Our specialty is apple, peach, pumpkin, and sweet potato and strawberry rhubarb. It's a cobbler of sorts, but juicier. There's a crust on the top, but not on the bottom, and the fruit is just about as ripe as it gets. You didn't want anything to go to waste, so you might have berries that were uh, a little too ripe, and you could stretch it. You can uh, make a, a sonker and stretch it and serve several people. Then I add my milk. Marcella Carrera bakes up Sonkers Fresh at Rockford General Store. They're well known for the dessert that never fails to start up a conversation. If they're from Surrey County, they'll probably tell you the story about how their grandmother or their mother made Sonker and what they remember about the Sonker being a child. If they're not from Surrey County, you'll probably hear, what is Sonker? So where did this elusive delicacy come from? Accounts differ, of course, but all agree that the Sonker's history runs just about as deep as its juices. All the way back to when people from Scotland settled in Surrey County. The Scottish apparently had a word similar to Sonker. Some say it means a little of this or that. Others believe it refers to a small grassy knoll or even Sonker is a Scottish term, meaning what's for dessert? No matter the origin. It's delicious. <laughs> it's hard to tell if Ann B ever whipped up a Surrey Sonker for company. One at a time, each in his turn. Or if Opie would cry once his Sonker was gone. Yeah, the, the time for you to cry is when we run out of it. <laughs> what are you doing now? Practicing for when we run out of it. <laughs> But it's a universal truth that this dessert is just as much a part of Surrey County life as Mayberry and those beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains. The mystery reveal. Solved. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so Surrey Sonker is such a thing, guys, that there's even a Surrey Sonker trail. You can get a map when you come to the visitor center and go and try the Sonker at all the stops. But you know what? We're going to try one of the Sonkers right now. Miss Angel, come on in here. What flavor is this? Peach. Peach. All right, you know I have to try it on live television, and you know it is going to be good. Need some ice cream with that. Mm. Bring some back. Mm. Merry Christmas. Merry <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> I wish you could smell this. You better Speechless. bring some back. Mm, it is so good. Guys, look, we have all different flavors. I can bring a whole Sonker back for See? you. I'll just buy one for Miss Angel right here. Speaking sure. my language. That's right. Well, we'll make sure that Sonker trail goes right to the studio. <laughs> right that's, to Greensboro. That's what I want. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Maddie. All right. The 4 to 5 continues. Don't forget to keep following us on Facebook and our YouTube channel, too, as well. We're live in both places commenting with you.
Where's the switch? Welcome back to your four to five, a new news show that keeps you informed and connected to the world around us. Show that you're a part of yes. as well. All right, so if you're a sports fan like I am, you're probably marveled at what some of the athletes make. But think about this, Forbes just posted the top, the highest, 20 highest paid coaches in the United States. What are the coaches are making? Two of them in the top 20 are right here in the Tar Heel State. Yeah, and the money they're making is nothing to sneeze about. I want you to listen to these figures. Some of them making a double or triple or quadruple what I would ever hope to make. Yes, uh, <laughs> by the way, that would be former Panthers head coach Ron Rivera. He comes in at number 19 with a salary of 7.75 million. You're looking at Coach K because he's on the list too. But Rivera was the seventh longest tenured coach before he was fired and he still is owed another year of salary because of an extension he signed last year. Yeah, and let's talk about Coach K. Coach Mike Krzyzewski coming in at number 10. Coach K makes a whopping $10 million a year. <laughs> Some would say it is well deserved since he has nearly 200 more career wins than any other men's Division I basketball coach in five national titles. That's one for each finger on the hand. That is a lot out there. People were commenting on this uh, too. I posted it earlier just to see what people thought and I think they were all over. I mean, you were asking me too, Jalen. Yeah, and you know, so I looked at the article and I felt like the one name that stuck out to me most was Dan Quinn of the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, yes. He came in tied at 15th and I mean, the list was made up of 10 NFL coaches, which isn't a shocker, which is the, you know, the largest money maker in the country. But, you know, Dan Quinn it's really stuck. I don't know I if know. he was quite deserving of that, but it is what it is. The Falcons, he's got a win percentage of like 51%. So. And I, Andy Reid was another one I was kind of shocked at, too. I mean, he's been around a while, though, so I think that's probably goes that. Anyway, interesting to me if you're a sports fan. Yeah, let us know. Are you surprised at any of the comments? Maybe we'll read them here at the end of the show. But keep watching the 4 to 5. We'll return right after the break. Hey, we're going to step right outside and we're going to be at Snappy Lunch. Okay, I'll tell her to come in here. <laughs> your child, no, it's good. absolutely, your child can have some of this sonker, but just for the baby, Cammy. My um, pregnant assistant news director is asking where her pie is. <laughs>
Good afternoon and welcome back to the 4 to 5. I'm Mary Children, joined by Tahesha Moyes and Maddie Gardner is live with us in Mount Fury. Hey Maddie, Hello. how's it going out there? We are here to inform you and make you feel connected and let you into our world. So make sure you are a part of the conversation using the word four, number two, word five. But right now we're going to get you caught up on some of our headlines with our four to five roundup. Beginning in Guilford County, where Guilford County commissioners are meeting tonight, the board is discussing bus driver raises and funds for school maintenance work. Commissioner Skip Alston suggested reallocating nearly six million dollars. That money was left over over from the budget set aside for new county voting machines. The county budgeted for 8 million, but only used 2 million. Authorities are still investigating a sailor's motive for a shooting at a base in Pearl Harbor. Authorities aren't sure if Wednesday's shooting was planned. In the meantime, two civilian employees we know were killed and another was hurt. The shooter's name has not been released, but the, a Navy spokesperson says that the shooter shot and killed himself after. The shooting comes just three days before the anniversary of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. That's December 7th. Some news with food. E. coli outbreak from romaine lettuce is expanding. The CDC says 23 states are now impacted and the number of people sick is up to 102. 58 people are in the hospital. 10 people have developed kidney failure. So make sure you check the labels on your lettuce to see where it's grown and don't buy any lettuce from Salinas, California. Also avoid salad mixes or wraps with romaine lettuce. And I want you to take a look at this. This is a CDC map of illnesses by state. North Carolina, you can see, has only one infected person. Wisconsin has the highest number of people sick at 31. And here's a story you just can't stop clicking on today involving more packages stolen. There's a UPS employee in Miami accused of stealing more than $1,000 worth of packages. He was a seasonal employee with the company. This man here, 18 year old Emmanuel Regin Jr. would help full time drivers unload the packages. Police say he would then hide the packages under dumpsters and go back for them. Someone tipped off the manager, according to a report. They later found that they later found the stolen packages and electronics in his car during a traffic stop. And we have a story you just really want to know about. If you are trying to find love online, you'll want to listen to this. There's a new investigation that reveals most free dating apps don't screen for registered sex offenders. That means millions of people who use them could be at risk. Match Group, who owns most of the online dating services, only screens for sexual predators on the fee-based match.com. If found, the accounts are scrubbed, but a match group spokesperson told Columbia Journalism Investigations, quote, there are definitely sex offenders on our free app. Scary to think about. That includes the apps you see here on your screen, Tinder, OkCupid, okay Hinge, and Plenty of Fish. All right, speaking of the dating world now, we're moving on from ghosting people because there are new dating terms that you have to know about. Why they asked me to do this story, <laughs> I've been out of the pool for a long time. Let's talk about these. <laughs> benching is one of them. Benching is only texting someone or liking their social media posts, okay? Haunting, no more ghosting. Instead, you are haunting someone's social media pages but not speaking to them. Orbiting, this one makes me laugh here, someone that talks to you through social media but never texts you. Different from haunting because with haunting you've already been ghosted. <laughs> Are you getting it all? Kitten fishing, we've all heard of cat fishing, but this means you highlight your best qualities and never mention your worst quality. Isn't that everybody though? Yeah, that's not a thing. Uh, using out of date photos or pretending to like things that you actually don't. Did you get all that? I hope you did, because I think I'm lost between the ghosting and the haunting. I'm, I'm just scared, basically, overall. Uh, let's talk about a forecast, shall we, and see what's happening there. Uh, overall, when you look at the weather that we're having, it's not all that bad. I mean, overnight lows, which, by the way, we hit that in the morning hours, right? So in the afternoon hours, that's really not that far off the mark of where we should be for uh, this time of the year. So don't worry about that. Rain chances, you know, there is a slight chance on Friday, but it's only a 20%. We really don't think that'll amount to much. Just get ready this weekend. We clear out, might be a little breezy on Saturday, but you're looking at highs in the 40s and some overnight lows in the upper 20s. It's going to be cold at those parades it we're will heading be. to. Bundle up. Yeah. Well, as you can see, we are missing a person at the table here. Maddie Gardner is in her hometown of Mount Airy. Yeah, she's taking the four to five on the road, of course. Maddie, all I want to know is have you seen Barney. Where's Deputy Five? Whoop, where are you? There you are. Actually,
actually, Eric, you asked that. Kyle, can you show him right above the window there? There's Deputy Barney Fife. He must be wondering when he can get his famous pork chop sandwich because we are standing in front of Snappy Lunch right now. Of course, they are closed now, but if you were here at lunch, there would be a line all the way up the block. People love the pork chop sandwich. Sometimes they even order two. Of course, this is the heart of Mayberry, right? What the Andy Griffith Show is based off of. You'll see a lot of the memorabilia there in the window. And next to Snappy's, Floyd's Barbershop. I wish she was there. I could sit down in a chair, maybe get a trim here. Back with Jenny Smith. She is from the Visitor Center here in Mount Airy. How many people come here wanting to see Mayberry? So in our visitor center last year, we greeted over 75,000 wow. people. I don't know if that translates to how many pork chop sandwiches Snappy Lunch has <laughs> served up, but um, the majority of those people are here for Andy Griffith. They're here for that Mayberry experience. Yeah, you'll have to double the 75,000 because I'm telling you, people order two pork chop sandwiches. They're that good. Okay, Jenny, so what are people looking for when they come here to see Mayberry? What are some of the hot spots? So a lot of times people are coming, they want that pork chop sandwich, they want to sit in Floyd's chair, uh, they want to do that squad car tour. Um, and we also have the Andy Griffith Museum, which is awesome. Um, a lot of people will come here for that to see that large collection of memorabilia. So we have all kinds of Mayberry things that they can, they can see and do here. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, this town of Mayberry was based on Mount Airy. Jenny, talk about that and how Andy Griffith really based his show on his hometown. So Andy Griffith was born and raised here. Um, although the show was not filmed here in Mount Airy, a lot of the places and people that were mentioned in the show were real places and people here in Mount Airy. Mm -hmm. So just like Snappy Lunch, that was a business that was in operation when he was growing up here. Um, he used to come and have lunch here and that was mentioned on the show. It was mentioned on one episode of the Andy Griffith show. Still here today, still in operation. Same hours as they've had <laughs> since they opened back in the day. So um, a lot of the uh, people and places are real and they, they are here in Mount Airy. Right, a lot of great photo opportunities here. How are we going to translate Mayberry into the future, Jenny? <laughs> well, I mean, as long as it's as long as it's still in syndication and people are watching it, what we're seeing a lot now is families coming back and they're bringing their kids and they're saying, "This is we watch the Andy Griffith Show together, and it's something that we trust that our kids can watch and we don't have yep. to worry about it. Um, it's just good, wholesome." fun uh, family show and so as long as they're watching it they're still coming here to see it all right Jenny thank you so much you know I really do wish Snappy's was open I, I need to do one more thing before we toss it back Kyle can you paint across the street my sweet mama is over there hey mom you're on television love you so much <laughs> she's been our special assistant there for the live chats I just had to embarrass her a little bit by the way she went to high school with the one and only Eric Chilton we did. We did. We grew up together. I'm so funny. She's across the street trying to look like Joe Hide Citizen. behind the car. Right. I'm not here. I'm not here. And I just want to say Maddie's mom is the sweetest because oh my, my gosh, first yes. week here on air, Maddie actually took me on a tour of Mount Airy and Mayberry there. And we stopped by Maddie's mother's home and there was a sign that said, welcome to Haysha because I was just coming to the triad. Oh, see? So. She has a place in my heart. That's what Mount Airy is all about. Hospitality. I'm telling, you, I'm telling you. All right, in case you didn't know this, the Food Network just named the top diner in each state. It was a pretty big honor. And North Carolina's top diner is right here in the triad. Think about it. Can you guess? Do you have an idea? We went there to find out why it's so good. It's one of my favorites. Here's what everybody had to say about Greensboro's Smith Street Diner. <laughs> Food Network ranked this the best diner in North Carolina. You knew already? Yes, I knew. I can't even be the bearer of news. She's all over it. I know the chef. I've known him for years. And he doesn't put anything out that's not fabulous. It's like it's all homemade food, and we've just been here for a while. It's a good mom and pop shop, not a corporate place. Not just because of the great customer service that they have here, but the food is amazing. The biscuits are huge. I don't know if you've had those. <laughs> and you have a culinary arts degree? I do. See, that's an endorsement right there, right? <laughs> Thumbs up. Before you turn around, your food on the, on the table. <laughs> It is the best place uh, around. I come from High Point over here a couple times a week. That's like a 35 minute drive, isn't it? Yeah. Just for Smith Street. Yeah. Our biscuits are huge, but also our pancakes is a special recipe, and the pancakes take up the whole plate. It's fresh, and everything in the coffee is amazing. And you know, I don't eat breakfast like that, but I'll definitely eat it here. Oh, yeah, exactly. I'm better than home. <laughs>
hope your wife's not watching. <laughs> Don't say that. Good. I don't know what it is about today's show. We have the Surrey Sonker. We have Snappy's Lunch. Now you're showing me Smith Street <laughs> Diner. It's almost dinner time. It so is. I got to head somewhere to eat. See, I think that's what happened. As we wrote stories for today, the closer we got to four, we just start writing about <laughs> right. food. We're so hungry. They're biscuits, by the way. They call them cat head biscuits because they said they're the size of a cat head. No, they are. Yeah. They're they rather really large. Are. They're like this. And their food, they say, is made from scratch there. They don't, nothing in packages. But everybody mentioned service. That was kind of the big thing that the waitresses there know people by name and it, it's a tiny intimate place i love it it's very good if you haven't been you really need to go now Dude. because it has a top honor yes all right we'll see you when the four to five returns have you been to smith street's diner comment on our live stream we'd love to know Hey, uh, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie. They forever go together. Welcome back to the four to five. I want to tell you about this because there is one thing that I cannot live without and that's my music. What about you, Eric? No, I do. I love to have music around the house. It's big in both of our lives. I do it while I cook. I always have music on when I'm cooking. Well, you know, there are many options of how you choose to listen to your music and we want to know how do you listen to your music. You can see your options there. You have streaming apps, satellite radio, old school radio. I'm going to just say radio because just radio. just radio, plain old radio, plain old radio. And that's winning too right yeah. now. I thought streaming would be in, but we want you to weigh in to, and uh, do that by going to WFMY.com slash vote now. You can go to our app as well and click on the vote now button and we'll be talking about your comments. But that is, I mean, that's definitely, it's a thing. The streaming apps are a big thing right now. That's for sure. Ton of services out there to stream with from Pandora to Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music. They're absolutely everywhere. Now, Apple Music and Spotify are the market leaders according to ConsumerReports.com, but everybody has their personal favorites for different reasons. Yeah, so we want to go back to our question one more time. How do you get your music? This is actually really surprising to me. Most me people too. get their music through their radio. For me, it's Spotify on my phone and I looked at here and it says that we listened 
29,000 minutes together this year. That's she a lot Spotify. of time. So we did the math. I told Tahesh if you average that out, it's a, it averages to 1.3 hours a day for a year for her. That's just minimum. That's a lot of music. Minimum. Minimum. <laughs> Okay, creepy or cute? This local invention could keep your Christmas tree from drying out. He's called the Evergreen Elf. I remember him. You, you showed so, him before. Right, so there's no <laughs> guessing, no checking. The elf does it for you. Do you guys have a trick to keep your live tree longer? Oh, I was going to say I have a fake tree, so <laughs> that, that was my way. I do, way. do it right there. I yeah. found, when I bought my tree this year, the guy told me hot water. He told me to use hot water. I'd never heard that before. Interesting. So we're okay. doing that. All right, we're going to debunk some of the other common practices. A lot of people say aspirin or yep. bleach or, you know, that kind bleach. of stuff. Mm -hmm. huh. I know, it's so weird, isn't it? What I would really like is if that elf talked like in a British or an Australian huh. accent. How about Can you, you do it? I can't. <laughs> out of water? <laughs> it would be out of really water. Bad. Out of water. Uh, oh, very good. Like that? Very yes, good. I would like that. <laughs> nice. Okay. So, two wants to know is putting it to the two test for you today. So, we want you to check it out a little bit later on today. But first, right now, I want to show you this right here. It is a school bus that is on fire. The federal government keeps tabs on these numbers and they say, one to two school buses every single day catches on fire in our country. And if you're not cleaning those Class B fuels off every day or periodically, they will build up over time. And once you combine that build up with the extreme amount of heat from the turbocharger, you're going to run into an issue. Okay, the NTSB recommends that all school buses have a fire compression system in their engine compartment, but right now, North Carolina does not require it. Most buses don't have it, should they? Well, I would That's see shocking. why not, but maybe uh -huh. money is a reason, yes, funding for yes. that. Yes, yes, yeah, they're pretty expensive, wow. that's true. All right, so we're going to be taking a look at what that suppression system is, what North Carolina has on buses right now, and we're going to kind of give you an update on all of that going on later. All right, we'll be right back. Stay there. The Fortify continues in a minute. Hi there, one, two, three, one, two, three. But in today's world, we are we saying too much too soon? The sheriff's office not far from the triad says a false report about an abduction attempt is being shared online and is creating panic what you should do to stop the spread. Thank you. Touring with Mike Cockrum. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.
Welcome back to the 4 to 5. You know, earlier we asked you about where you get your music from, old school radio streaming uh, or satellite. Chris Kelly from Rock 92 texted me and said, old school radio. Yeah, you better. Can't imagine why. <laughs> yes, I figured. All right, uh, so if you've ever been to Mount Air, you know there are two police departments there. Yeah, where they're the real ones that are out there solving the crimes. And then these guys, the Mayberry Squad Car Tours, actors who dress up like Mayberry characters and they show tourists all around the town. Yeah, and my first week here, Maddie actually took me to Mount Airy and I got a look at the Squad Car Tours and today she is here taking us all on a ride. She's live in Mount Airy with a little bit more. <laughs> Matt, you're not under a citizen's oh, arrest, are you? Way. I did it twice. That's right, Tasia. <laughs> I'm always happy to be your welcome committee, by the way. Okay, so I'm live outside Wally Service Station. You're going to recognize that place from the Andy Griffith Show. And I'm here with Mike Cockrum. You run the squad car tours and Wally Service Station. This is still a popular thing. Still, people want to see Mayberry. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, people come looking for a simpler way of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell me what we see on the squad car tour, Mike. Well, we go out to the Granite Quarry and we go down Main Street and go by uh, Andy's uh, Playhouse and see the statue of Andy and Opie and by his home place and back to Wally's. It's about a 30, 35 minute ride. And you were in the cars that they would have used, the same models on the Andy Griffith Show. I just learned they got a new one every season. That's right. Ford Motor Company was one of the first corporate sponsorships of a television show was Ford providing vehicles to the Andy Griffith Show. So every season they got a new squad car. So. Any old Ford Galaxy from 1960 to 1967, you can make a squad car out of. That's awesome. So Wally Service Station can't get gas here anymore, but you transformed it into a shop. People can come by and buy some Mayberry paraphernalia. Right, you get Mayberry souvenirs and uh, some local uh, handcrafted souvenirs and uh, just a nice little gift shop for the tourists. All right, so I think the only thing left to do, Mike, is to get in the squad car. What do you think? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so this is actually a surprise for Eric Chilton. Guess who my driver is today? You might recognize him. You grew up with him. It's your brother, Eric Chilton, Gary. He's going to... What did I say? He told me to say he's the better looking one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to get in the squad car. Guys, I hate to leave you, but I have some Mayberry to see. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's go. I'm ready. Oh, uh, I'm going to get him. I will get him. <laughs> it's only, ju no, Julie, stop it. She said, is he the better looking? With 55 degrees uh, for tomorrow's high. Know that overnight lows, which will be tomorrow morning, by the way, will be 34. Uh, it's breezy and chilly. Really cold in Gary Chilton's house this weekend. Uh, that'll be upper 40s for Saturday and Sunday. Lows will be in the upper 20s. We do have some rain coming in toward the beginning of next week. Folks, get ready for that 50 to 70 percent chance. That is Monday and Tuesday. Highs will build, though, warmer with the rain, 55 to 59 for those two days. Breezy and cold and sunny on Wednesday with a colder high of 48. And next Thursday, 41 degrees, partly cloudy, and a 20 percent chance of a shower. With a better looking one. You can hash that out later. Oh, well, coming up on WFMY News 2 at 5, officers constantly tell us to say something if we see something suspicious. But in today's world, are we saying too much too soon? A sheriff's office not far from the triad says a false report about an abduction attempt is being shared online and it's creating panic. What you should do to stop the spread of misinformation. And a North Carolina organization is now the proud owner of a famous pig. What makes Ziggy and the Farm Sanctuary so special at five? for tomorrow yes hey ice cold milk and an oreo cookie they forever go together like a classic combination <clears throat> hi there maddie